Hey everyone, today I'd like to talk about a simple financial ratio that can be used to help us combine both fundamental growth and value concepts into one. Before we dive into that though, let's take a look at some quick disclosures before we get going. Okay, the information here is for general information purposes only. The paper money software application is provided for educational purposes only. Investing in stocks does involve risk, including the loss of principal. Past performance is no guarantee of future results as well. Okay, so turning over to the Schwab.com site, let's go through what the PEG ratio is initially, the PEG. And what that stands for is price to earnings growth. Let's break that ratio down right now. So what that is, it is the PE ratio that many people are familiar with, price to earnings, and we're dividing that by growth. Now, not just any growth, it's going to be projected growth right over here. Projected growth. Now, a lot of groups will say for this number, they'll look to a three to five year number projected growth. Those can be more difficult the further out in time you go to actually hit the correct growth number. But many, many uh, companies will use a one year growth rate, projected growth rate. And that's exactly what Schwab uses. And we can tap into that on the Schwab site as well as in the stock screener. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and click on I'm Actually, I'm right in Schwab.com. I just clicked on research. Below in research, you can see stock screener right there. A quick note, you can find those projected earnings numbers under company performance within the screener down at the bottom. And you'll see it right there. That is the there's the long term, that three to five year that we just talked about. The one that Schwab uses, though, for the PEG ratio, it's right there. That is the next year number, as you can see right there. Okay, so with that, though, let's dive in right into the uh, the ratio itself. And that is right there at the bottom. That is the price to earnings growth ratio, as you can see right up top. Okay, within that PEG ratio, you can see it does list a minus or I should say a less than one. In other words, the, the price to earnings growth ratio is less than one. And what is that telling us? Well, let me, let me point it out this way. If the PE as part of the PEG ratio, PE ratio uh, was equal to 20, and the projected growth rate that we were looking at was also equal to 20, well, then the PEG ratio itself, we divide 20 over 20, we are going to get a one. And that just tells us that the anticipated growth rate that, that, we're, that we're paying for, I should say the rate of earnings that we're paying for right now, price to earnings currently at 20 is equivalent to that projected growth rate of, earn, of the earnings per share over the next one year. Now, where it might become interesting for some investors trying to find maybe the undervalued situation is when we're looking at a less than one ratio, that type of scenario. And what that scenario would look like, for example, uh, the growth rate would be higher than the P.E. ratio. For example, we could say the growth rate uh, could be 25 as opposed to 20. OK, that would put us less than one. And you can see probably right there the value of what we're, what we're talking about. What the current rate of uh, the market is showing for the price of that stock based on earnings right now is less than. In other words, it is cheaper than the projected growth rate if that growth rate ends up being correct. Okay, so that is what a less than one figure looks like. And by the way, we could also have a scenario where uh, the, just the P.E. ratio is just, you know, that drops. In other words, you know, maybe we're looking at this scenario where the P.E. is 15, but the growth rate is still 20. Regardless, what we'd be seeing here is, uh, yeah, the growth rate's higher than the P.E. It's going to give us a ratio of less than one. And that is an interesting area if we're trying to find what may be undervalued right now, according to that projected growth and the P.E. ratio. Before I do that, though, what I want to do, let's look at a set of companies that might be less than one in the S&P 500. I'll show you how quickly we could do this. So just under the basic section up top here, let's click under index. There is our S&P 500. Well, the S&P 503 currently, and that's happened. Sometimes you get a few more companies in there, but you've got the 500. So now we're scanning within the 500 
I'm going to go down here and I'm going to select the valuation, the peg ratio right there. We're going to go less than one and see how many we get. So 47. So you can see less than 10% of the stocks right there in the S&P 500. Less than 10%. In fact, we're probably looking at nine or so, 9%, 9.3% of stocks in the S&P 500 are considered to be undervalued based upon that peg ratio. Now I'm going to go ahead and just take a look at these right now. One of the reasons why we do like to look at the S&P 500 is they might be more familiar companies to you. They're, you know, they might be more established in the sense that, you know, there are requirements to get on the S&P 500 and uh, sometimes the volumes might be higher as well. Now, looking over here on the right hand side, you can see there is the peg ratio. And here is a list of all of the specific ratios. You know, they're all less than one, meaning what? Well, that growth rate is higher than what people are currently paying or what the market's valuing the P.E. ratio as price to earnings. That is it's a fascinating idea. And that that simple ratio does combine both growth and value into one, and that one is going to be the peg ratio. Before I'm done, you know, uh, I want to just highlight too, if we ever wanted to just put within this same search, if we wanted to get a list of what the PE ratio was and uh, those growth rates, all we need to do is simply go over here and we can add them in. In fact, there is the PE ratio. We could get that as a comparison. We could also use the company performance uh, section, as I showed you, that category, and highlight down below here uh, the, uh, yeah, right at the bottom, right near the bottom, the next year's fiscal uh, fiscal growth rate, projected growth rate. That's the estimated same thing as projected growth rate. We can add those columns in as well. Folks, always remember, too, uh, to keep in mind that, that the peg ratio itself, although it's... It's interesting because it's combining both growth and value fundamental aspects. It is just one fundamental aspect, and investors will often consider several financial ratios when assessing a potential stock for valuations, for a growth potential, etc. So, and always too, you know, we talked just purely about fundamentals today, but uh, stock charts can obviously be very helpful in that regard as well. Let's just say, for example, a company. Uh, that may have been down for a while, downward trending. Maybe they do have a less than one peg ratio. So the peg is less than one. In other words, the growth rate, projected growth rate is higher than what investors are paying right now or the market rate for the price to earnings ratio or what earnings are valued at right now. And then you start to see maybe a change in the chart higher highs and higher lows, maybe there could be some growth that could help to fuel those prices going higher in the future. All right. Well, everybody, that's what I had for you today. Hope you found this helpful. Uh, always be sure to tune into our Trader Talks channel. Love to have you on board there, folks. Have a wonderful day, and thanks to all of you for joining me.